welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm really excited because I'm going to be talking about five of my favorite thrillers of all time. So I have quite a few <laughs> on this list. Well, maybe not quite a few, but I probably have enough to say 10, but I'm going to go and just tell you guys about five of them. And then if you guys like this video, then maybe I'll make another installment. But um, yeah, some of these books I haven't talked about before. Some of them I have talked about. So whatever, let's just get started. So the first book that we're going to talk about, and this is in no particular order, by the way, this isn't like my absolute favorite or anything like that. Um, but this one might surprise you guys because I have said on here that I do not particularly like Stephen King. Um, <laughs> and so this is weird that this is a Stephen King book. This is actually a Stephen and Owen King book. Um, and it's called Sleeping Beauties. So I don't know if maybe it was Owen's writing style that I identified more with and that I like a lot more because most of the actual Stephen King books where he writes them on his own, I don't end up particularly enjoying them too much. Um, but this one that he wrote with his son, I actually <laughs> really liked it. And this one I read right at the beginning of the pandemic and this is basically kind of a book about a pandemic. It is quite long. I kind of alternated between physically reading this and listening to it via audiobook. I think the audiobook was like 40 hours or something like that. And it is just over 700 pages. Um, so it's quite a quite a big undertaking. <laughs> but it was really, really good. And basically what happens is there is some sort of like strange phenomenon going on where all of a sudden women start to fall asleep, like whenever they get tired or they go to bed at night, whatever, and they don't wake up. Um, and this happens to every single woman that falls asleep. So just one by one, the women are slowly just not waking up. And of course we have women that are trying to prolong staying awake, um, but eventually of course everyone has to sleep. And so eventually all of the women in the entire world end up going to sleep and they don't wake up. Now they're not dead. <laughs> what happens to them is this like cocoon kind of forms around them and their heart rate just slows down and they just don't do anything. They don't ever wake up, but they are still alive. And this, like I said, this cocoon forms around them. Um, and anytime that the women are trying to be liberated from these cocoons, like if somebody tries to kind of cut them out of it, the women like wake up, but they don't really wake up. They just all of a sudden, like in this animalistic sort of mind frame where they just go absolutely crazy and attack the person that woke them up. I'm going to put this down because it's really heavy. They just attack the person that woke them up and just scratch them all up and just like fiercely attack them and then lay back down in the cocoon covers over them again. Um, so it's really, really weird. And so what we get to see here is, like I said, it's almost like a pandemic sort of situation where this is happening to all women. It's only happening to women. And then we kind of like move into seeing what is happening with these women. So there's like multi-dimensional, yeah, like multi-universes, um, parallel universes, if you want to call it, whatever, where the women are in one side and the men are left behind in another. And we get to see kind of what happens with the women and what the women do with this situation and what the men do with the situation, which is pretty scary. <laughs> um, so it's definitely very creepy. It's more of like a slow burn sort of thriller. It's not like really fast paced. Like this isn't, you know, a murder mystery or anything like that, but it's just, it's very creepy. And it is thrilling in the fact that you just don't know what's going to happen <laughs> at the end of this. Like, are they going to be able to fix this? They have obviously scientists like trying to figure out what's going on, trying to, you know, have a cure for all these women. And um, I really, really enjoyed this one. I read it a few years ago and I would say that it is one of my favorites. Next, of course, <laughs> you guys are probably so sick of me talking about this, but that is Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky. I'm not going to go into a whole bunch of detail on this one because I have talked about it so much on my channel. You guys are probably so sick and tired <laughs> of me talking about this book, but if you haven't read it and you love thrillers, please read this book. I know it seems daunting. Once again, it's pretty long. Again, I think it's just over 700 pages, um, but this one is a really, really fast read compared to the Stephen King one. Uh, I just found myself flying through this and I just enjoyed it so much. And basically, once again, we're, I seem to really like books where we're dealing with like 
multi universes and parallel universes and stuff like that because that is also included in this there's also some horror into this there's the thrilling aspect where this child goes missing for a week basically this child goes missing for a week and he comes back completely different um and we're not sure if he's been possessed we're not sure if he's been kidnapped um he just walks into the woods one day and disappears for a week and then after a week he just walks back out so we're not sure if he's just stumbling around this entire time trying to find his way out, if someone has taken him or what has happened to him. Um, but like I said, it also deals with different variables of the multi-universe and um, parallel universes kind of overlapping each other. This, like I said, I have said in other videos that this reminds me a little bit of Stranger Things. So if you like that show on Netflix you might really enjoy this one uh, but yeah I'm not gonna go too much more into detail on this one because I've just talked about it ad nauseum on my channel so far you guys are probably sick of hearing about it so the next book that we're gonna talk about I don't actually have the physical copy here with me because I have lent it to my sister-in-law so I just have the uh, sequel that I'm gonna hold up to you and that is this the sequel is called The Shadow on Bob Island which I have not read the sequel yet but the first book that is in my top favorite <laughs> thrillers of all time is The Cult on Fog Island by Marriott Lindstein. And so The Cult on Fog Island follows Sophia and she is trying to get away and kind of restart life. She's kind of had some negative experiences. She's coming out of a very turbulent, bad relationship and she just kind of like wants to do some self-care and just kind of be kind to herself and start over. So she ends up going to this island. There's this program that's being offered there and it's kind of like a lot of celebrities are going to it and it's kind of like a, a retreat where it's just like you focus on yourself. There's meditation, there's yoga, clean, healthy eating, um, smoothies, like that sort of place, right? It's just a place to kind of reset your body and your mind. And she ends up going to this and she decides that she wants to stay. And as she stays and she gets kind of further into this sort of scenario in this situation and she ends up kind of working at this place, um, she realizes that it is absolutely not at all what it seems. So she kind of figures out that this place is really just a cult and the people that work here are being controlled. And she kind of gets herself in a little bit too deep where she can't get herself out. And that's what we're following is her journey, kind of trying to escape this cult and some very scary things happen. Um, and there's some twists that you won't see coming. And I absolutely love the first one. And then now there is the sequel that I'm really excited to read as well. Next is a YA thriller. And this one I absolutely love. And that is One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus. And I have since picked up all of Karen M. McManus's books and they've just never quite hit the same as this one. And I think I really enjoyed the audiobook version of this. I did, I've never read it um, physically, but I really liked the audiobook version of it. And I really liked the people that were narrating it as well. So just say that. <laughs> and um, so I don't know if maybe if you physical read it, it's gonna be quite as good, but I just really enjoyed the audio. And basically this follows a cast of characters. It's almost kind of like a breakfast club situation where this mismatch of characters are kind of placed together in this situation where they kind of have to come together and figure out what has going on. Um, basically all of these different characters, I think there's five and they end up in detention and really weirdly, like they have been kind of like planted <laughs> there. So they've all had strange things happen to them that isn't even really their fault. Um, they've had like things planted on them or whatever that has ended them in this situation in detention and they are there with Simon who is another character and halfway through the detention all of a sudden they realize that Simon is dead and with this death being investigated it is concluded that he was murdered and so basically we're following each of these five characters because they are all under investigation. Like one of them, it was just them five in the room and Simon and Simon is dead. So one of them had to have done it. And you're following each of these characters. You're in their mind. Um, it's very introspective. So you're seeing things from the character's point of view and you really don't think that any of these characters did it. And you're just wondering throughout the entire time there's an investigation going on. You're finding out more about these characters. You're really starting to like these characters. They're all likable in their own way and you just can't really see any of them being the killer. 
and you're just wondering who did it. <laughs> and then there is a really good twist at the end that I did not see coming at all and I really enjoyed it. So this is a really good YA thriller. And the last book we're going to talk about today is one that I've talked about before and that is The Mary Shelley Club by Goldie Moldovsky. So this one really reminded me of 90s and early 2000s horror movies. That's pretty much what it's based on. Um, we have a girl who comes to a new school. She's struggling to fit in and she ends up kind of inadvertently getting herself into this club, which was kind of an accident. Um, and she's in this Mary Shelley club where these kids are obsessed with 90s and early 2000s horror movies. And what they end up doing is they're kind of like pranksters. So it's kind of a pranking club but also a horror movie club. So they're always watching horror movies and talking about like how everything was executed and they each have a task throughout the year, which is to pull a prank on somebody using one of these horror scenes. So basically the prank ends up being successful if the target screams. So they each have to go through and do this um, using a different scene from a horror movie to scare someone. But the only problem is, is that the very first, the very first prank goes off and it turns out that people are actually getting killed. So you have our main character who's looking at the rest of her friends that she's made in this club and it seems like one of them has done it, but they're not sure which one. You're trying to figure out who is doing this, um, who is actually killing people in this club if it is somebody in this club or what's going on if there's an actual serial killer out there that is trying to like make a horror movie come to life in real life um, and you're just not sure what's going on so I really enjoyed this one if you are a 90s baby like me I was born in 87 so I grew up with you know like I know what you did last summer and the faculty like all these like horror movies <laughs> that scream you know um, you'll really enjoy this if you like those sort of things growing up you'll really enjoy this because it's just kind of a flashback to those days and I just loved how it was written in that regard so you guys, those are five of my all-time favorite thrillers. Like I said, some of them I've talked about before, some of them I haven't. Let me know what your thoughts on my picks are in the comments down below. And let me know if you'd like to see a part two of this video because I do have more that I can do a part two. Anyways, I hope you guys are having an awesome day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!